Hi, and welcome to the Modern Persian Food Podcast. We are food bloggers, Bita Arabian and Bita Nazim Kelly, and we're here to share with you the rich flavors and fresh ingredients of Persian cooking and how to incorporate them into today's modern lifestyles. We're excited to introduce you to the flavors, tastes, and techniques we use, and also our own cultural stories and perspectives growing up in the U.S. in a Persian family. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to episode number 52. We are here to talk about the sours in Persian cuisine. I'm joined by the lovely Bita. Hi, Bita Jun. Hi there. How are you? I'm good, thank you. So Persian cuisine is uniquely delicious in that we have a lot of foods that are sour in flavor. Some of the unique ingredients that make Persian dishes sour include dried lime, citrus of many forms, lemon and lime juice, oranges, onions, always starting with onions, shallots, green onions, tomatoes, vinegar, gure, aloo. <laughs> what am I missing? Those are just a few. Enjoyed fresh, enjoyed cooked down. Yeah, that's definitely a, a good list of some of the sour ingredients. We can deep dive into those. When you talk about Persian food and when you think about Persian food, the sour elements really add a balance to the dish that sometimes the dishes can be really rich, you can have fried ingredients and hearty stews and with the kebabs and stuff like that, that it's nice to have a little burst of sourness to really amplify the other flavors and bring balance to the palate. So definitely that's something to consider when you're doing it. One thing about the sour ingredients is sometimes it could be a little bit polarizing for people. Some people don't like sour, like it makes their whole body and mouth and face all tense up. So you can totally adjust it to whatever your preference is. Have less sour, have more sour based on however way you like it or the people who are going to enjoy it like it. But yeah, there is so many different ways to add sourness. There is a Persian cookbook author, very well-known cookbook author, Samin Nosrat, and she writes about salt, fat, acid, and heat, and the elements of making, you know, a very delicious meal normally has those components. So today, when we're talking about the sours, I think that we're listing out and discussing sort of like the acids in food that bring that balance. What's one of your favorite sour ingredients that you listed off? I definitely keep the dried limes. Mm -hmm. I always have dried limes. Limo amani. Yes, I like the yellow split pea stew. That's a favorite, and I cook it down with that. My husband likes it. Everyone loves that particular Persian stew. Yeah, gorma sabzi, too, has really great limo amani in it. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. another one. Let's talk about limo amani. Yeah, limo amani is like a dried lime. It actually comes from a country called Oman. And so limo omani is traditionally from that area. And they also refer to it as like black lime. It's like a dehydrated lime. It's small, it's hard, it's dark. And when you look at it, you're like, what am I going to do with this? And so you have to actually pierce it with like a fork or something and sometimes soak it in hot water or let it sit and simmer in the stew for a long time so that the whole consistency and texture of it kind of gets much softer. And then you can use your spoon to kind of break into it. If you're serving it whole in your dish, use your spoon to kind of like break it up as you eat it. And it has like an amazing punch of flavor. I personally love limo amini in dishes like that. And like to your point with the reime or with like korma sabzi or other dishes where there's big limo amani in it. It's like so delicious. I actually love limo amani in Korsha Karafs too. I don't know if you've ever tried mm -hmm. that. The celery yes. stew with mint and parsley. Yes, the celery stew is another one that could be sour, which I also love. And I mm -hmm. like to put artichoke in it as oh, well. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And I think some Persian cooks and home chefs and whatnot remove it before serving it and others leave it in. Mm -hmm. We leave the cooked dried lime in the stew because we do like to eat it, break it up and eat it. It's not too sour for us. We love it. They also come in ground form too. So if you don't want to have just like balls of sourness, you can actually add ground limo amini to your dishes as well. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Yeah, it probably spreads the sour flavor around mm -hmm. nicely. Yeah. I also have always have fresh lemon. I have lemon drink. Oh, lucky. That gives big, juicy lemons. I'm very blessed with fresh lemons here. And I always have 
lemon juice and lime juice. And I do use those not only in salads like Salad Shirazi, which I love to have a lot of lemon and yeah. or lime juice in. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much the dressing with salt and pepper of Salad Shirazi. And olive oil. Yeah, I don't even put olive oil in mine. You don't put it in there? Really? No, I just do like a lime juice with like salt. Honestly, so oh. good. Tomato, onion, cucumber. I mean, sometimes, but I don't think it needs it. So lemon and lime juice. And also in to my cooking, I like to put lemon and lime juice. Yeah. Definitely in some soups and stews. It just adds that something, that little balance. Yeah. I love adding it to recipes too. Like I really love adding it to the lubio polo. Mm. I don't know if you ever do that or not, but when I'm like kind of making the base of the lubio polo with the onions and the green beans that are like sauteed and has a lot of some warm spices in there. I love adding a little bit of lemon juice just to brighten it up a little bit. And I think that Persians really enjoy having their fish with lemon. That's a big one. I feel yes. like you always have that lemon. Yes. And also when it comes to like kebabs and stuff like juja kebab, not only is there usually served a lemon wedge, but a lot of times the marinade of the chicken, depending on how you're making it, if you're like grilling it up for juja kebab, has like a marinade with lemon juice. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's a little secret weapon. I encourage all of you listeners to just try a little splash of lemon juice in your cooking and a little fresh wedge on top right before, you know, of course, your fish or your kebab. It just does brighten it up, like you say, and elevates makes it a bit more sophisticated. I love that. Yeah, absolutely. So I kind of recall you talking about making osh and putting a splash of vinegar. I don't normally do that, but tell me about that. Yeah. You know, again, when it's like a hearty dish, like I love osh and I'm due to actually make a big batch. I just love the Persian noodle soup called ashish that has a ton of fresh herbs and spinach and long noodles in it. When I'm serving it, when I'm eating it or when I serve it is to put like a little drizzle of balsamic vinegar on top of it. I just feel like it really amplifies the flavor. Some people use keshk and I feel like keshk sometimes kind of adds a little bit of like a sourness as well. But personally, I think it's just for myself, it's easier to just use a little bit of vinegar. And I really love that mm-hmm. as like a garnish for my asherishte. And then vinegar also plays a big role in torshi. You know, we have actually a whole episode yeah. that we talk about torshi in, which I love. But torshi is like pickled vegetables in vinegar and with salt. It's super delicious delicious and those can sometimes pickle for like years and some versions turn into like a darker color and the vinegar kind of does that to them and so that's like another way of having the vinegar acidic flavor added to a lot of rich dishes too you serve the torshi like on the side like a condiment really put a little bit on each little bite as you're eating it and there's a lot of different variety of those thank you for bringing that up Torshi is super sour. I mean, torsh means sour. Yeah, that's right. (laughs) It's a mouth puckering little condiment or side that often is available to add to your meal. Yeah. Do you use vinegar in a lot of your cooking? I don't use it much beyond salad. Mm -hmm. I'll sometimes drizzle it on vegetables. I love it. I just, I guess I don't really think of it. I do use tomatoes and tomato paste sometimes in stews, and that's an acid that can add a little bit of sour yeah, and balance sure. to a dish. I do like that. One recipe that does include vinegar and it's actually cooked in there is dolme. I've never made dolme like from scratch myself. I've assisted in other people making it, but they do make a solution of the vinegar with sugar and add that to it as it's cooking. So that's another way that vinegar can be used to add that torsho shirin, a little sweet and sour flavor to the dish. I haven't made it either. I've helped. I actually used to help my grandma. Uh huh. It's super labor intensive. You cook all the parts, take the fresh grape leaves and you fold them. And I do want to learn because I love and... I do know that some people like to use kure for the sweet and sour. My mom makes a sort of sweet and sour version of dolme. And let's talk about kure. Yeah. What is kure? Kure is basically unripe grapes. So they're just tiny little green grapes. If you visually see it in a dish, you know, people have mistaken it for like peas, but it's definitely not peas. 
Yeah, or capers. It kind of looks like a caper, but it's not a caper. Yeah, it's just like a little round green ball that adds, again, a little like burst of flavor, sour flavor to the dish. Tart. Yeah. Gures, I would call tart. Yeah, tart. It's a very concentrated flavor. When we say gure, immediately I think of like horse badem jun, the eggplant mm-hmm. stew that is actually has the tomato paste in it. And yeah, you're right. You can see a ton of the gure garnished on top of the dish. I think that's definitely love it or leave it. Yeah, if you're not a big sour fan, you're not going to really want gure in your horsha badem jun. Which is eggplant. Yes. Badem jun eggplant. Badem jun is the eggplant, which I love served over warm rice with a nice tadik on the side. That's like great. I love having like fresh herbs on the side of a plate full of the horsha badem jun. Yeah. Speaking of which, the sabzi khordan platter, the fresh herbs, that introduces acid or sour a little bit or tart or however you want to call that flavor with the raw onion, often raw green onion. And in Persian cuisine, it is not uncommon to have a bite of raw onion along with your meal. Mm -hmm. Speaking of side dishes and so forth, yogurt can be very sour in and of itself. Oh, that's right. It's included in almost every meal. Mm -hmm. Yogurt with shallots or elephant garlic. That's a very sort of punchy, sour side dish. Maso musir. Mm, Yeah, for sure. You know, those side dishes are eaten again with those rich stews and kebabs and foods. It really brings balance to the palate. Another sour ingredient are plums. Sometimes when the plums are a little bit smaller, they're really tart. And you can actually make lava shack with those tart plums. We have a whole lava shack episode, I think number 38, where we talk about making lava shack. And it's just such a fun treat. But yeah, that sour plum, alusabs, you can actually cook that down and make like a paste. They call it rub, like there's robegoje, which is the tomato paste. You can also use like a pomegranate paste to add to dishes too. And the sour plums can be cooked down as well and turned into kind of like a thicker consistency and kind of almost paste-like where you can add that to dishes to add a subtle sourness to it to really brighten up the dish and not have to use gure or limu amani if you wanted to just bring some of those more delicate flavors in there. Yeah, and then the Seville orange is a citrus with a sour juice that's used in some dishes. I seem to recall that we talked about it with the Caspian chef. Mm -hmm, Yeah, and also um, the Seville oranges served with fish or in salads, that sounds really delicious to as a dressing. Mm-hmm. Well, we hope we piqued your interest around trying some of these sours in Persian cuisine, adding a little acid to elevate your meal. Are you ready for the Ask the Beat of the Day, Vita June? Yeah, I'm down. Let's go. Today's question comes from Farhad from Seattle. And Farhad would like to know, Beats... What is your go-to spice? What is my go-to spice? Mm -hmm. So we talked a lot about spices in our episode number two. It was actually our second episode. That's right. Aromatic spices. What is my go-to spice? So if I'm cooking Persian food, I think that my most quintessential Persian spice that I would incorporate to like really say like this is Persian is like, you know, of course, saffron would be kind of like the most recognizable Persian spice. So I would say if I'm definitely cooking like a Persian meal, saffron is pretty much top of the list there. But I think on a more day to day basis, my go to spice, the first spice that I run out of is turmeric. I use turmeric a lot. Whenever I'm cooking Persian food, the base of like the fried onions with turmeric, that's how I pretty much start most of my Persian dishes. I mean, I actually like to make like a little turmeric tea every morning to start my day. So I would say turmeric is my go to spice. Aside from salt. (laughs) Salt, I think, is kind of a freebie. How about you? What spice is your go-to? I'm with you. Saffron and turmeric for Persian food. Salt on everything. I'm a saltaholic. But in terms of what I use on every single thing and what I run out of, it probably have to be garlic powder and onion powder. I love it on everything, and I think I use it on every single type of dish. And the other one is EBTB, is what we call everything but the bagel seasoning. So good. It has become really trendy, and I also use that on everything. It does have a lot of garlic and onion and other little seeds. Cool. Yummy. Thank you for the question, Farhad. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you, Vita Jun. Great. Thanks so much, Vita Jun. Have a great day. Till next time. Bye. Bye bye. You've been listening to the Modern Persian Food Podcast with Vita and Vita. Thanks for spending time with us. If you've enjoyed what you heard today, consider telling a friend or giving us a good rating. 
You can subscribe to our show for free on your favorite podcasting app or find us online at modernpersianfood.com or on Instagram for the recipes and information we talked about today. We'd love to hear your thoughts and see you next time.